Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Doss. I'm an interventional cardiologist and the founder of Connected Cardiovascular Care Associates. In this video, we're going to explain to you how we go about doing a nuclear stress test. This is an imaging test that tells us about your heart, the structure, the function, and also whether there's any blockages in your arteries. We'll go through this in great detail so you can understand what the process is like when your physician orders this test for you. Essentially, there are two parts to this test. And in one part, we inject a tracer, which is basically a chemical that has no effect on your body other than to tell us where blood flow is occurring in the heart and where blood flow is blocked. In understanding what the blood flow patterns are in the heart, we can learn a lot about whether there's blockages, whether there's underlying previous heart damage, or other issues with the heart. And we can learn these by doing this imaging test. When a patient is scheduled for a nuclear stress test at C3, they're required to have fasted for four hours before coming in for their appointment. Patients should bring with them a bottle of water, a light snack, and if you're receiving the chemical stress test, a cup of coffee. First, our technician will take you back to administer an IV with saline that contains a small amount of radioactive tracer. The injection is perfectly safe and allows your heart function to be better detected by the imaging machine. The injection doesn't have any effect whatsoever on kidney function or anything else in your body. After this, you'll be directed back to the waiting room for 30 to 45 minutes. You may have a drink at this time, but water only. This wait time allows the heart to take up the medicine and clear out of the surrounding organs and tissues, so an accurate image of the blood flow to the heart can be obtained. Next, you will be taken to the imaging room where our machine will capture resting images of your heart and your heart function. This is done while you're sitting in an upright position, which makes the experience much more comfortable for you and produces higher quality images than if you were laying down. Because you're sitting upright, the camera can be placed closer to the heart. This helps reduce the imaging time and will produce a much more accurate image. The whole process takes about eight to nine minutes. The next step in the stress procedure, which takes between 15 to 20 minutes, can be administered either on the treadmill or through a chemical injection that stimulates the physical activity in the heart. Regardless of which one is recommended to the patient, both physical and chemical stress test procedures require the patient to disrobe and have 10 EKG leads placed on different areas of their chest. The EKG leads show if there are any changes during the stress test and provide the doctor with more useful information. The physical test requires the patient to spend anywhere from 6 to 12 minutes on a treadmill, regardless of how much time it takes to reach the target heart rate. This procedure starts off at a slow walking pace with the speed and steepness increasing every three minutes. Once the target heart rate is achieved, another injection of the same radio tracer is given. The chemical stress test takes an average of 10 minutes and is given by administering an injection of a drug called LexiScan, a vasodilator. The drug is injected over a 10 second period to open up the arteries that supply the heart with blood and allow for a second radio tracer injection. You can expect to feel as though you were physically exerting yourself, something which patients may find uncomfortable. Side effects may include mild shortness of breath, a mild headache, lightheadedness, tiredness, and other symptoms. Most people have very few or no side effects. If the effect of this injection are too mentally stressful for a patient, we have a reversal agent and we can use that at any time. Next comes a 30 to 45 minute wait period in the C3 waiting room. At this time, you may eat and drink water and coffee if you've been given the chemical stress test. Coffee is actually recommended because caffeine is an antidote to the chemical stress agent and may help with side effects. After this, you are taken back to the imaging area for five to seven minutes to get another heart scan with a resting heart rate. The stress test technician will check the image quality before you're able to check out. You should get a call from the medical assistant within 48 hours of the time the test is performed to give you your test results or you will learn about the results during your next visit. So you may be wondering what the test is like as you do it. Well, the test takes about three hours, most of which is time waiting from the injection, the exercise portion, and then actually the imaging portion. And what we learn during the test is the blood flow that your heart has, both with stress and with rest. Ultimately, after the test, your doctor will read the images, will determine whether there's any areas of blockage or any areas of concern, You'll get a phone call from the medical assistant to let you know whether there's any issues with the test and then you'll follow up with your doctor to be able to go over what the plan is it may be medications it may be a more invasive procedure or it may just be a follow-up 
for a change in your lifestyle or your other uh, treatment options. In all, what we try to do at C3 is to identify your risks and tell you what the best options are for your treatment once we've identified where, whether or not you have any blockages by testing like this. Thank you very much.